The first speaker, who's my, who's my colleague at Pivotal, came all the way from London. And, and she's responsible for introducing me to the greatest tea, which is Yorkshire Gold. Which I, I don't know if anyone's ever experienced this before, but it's indisputable fact. Especially if you ask Paula. So I'll just turn it over to Paula. She's going to push this button, the space bar. And when, when you push the space bar, you'll have 15 seconds per slide. And you don't control it. Okay. And then when you get to the end, they're going to applaud. Hopefully. And the next person will come. Good? You ready? Yeah. You got this? Okay, give a round of applause for Paula Kennedy. Okay, thanks Andrew. Thanks very much. Uh, thank you for coming. I'm here to talk about two of my favorite topics, helping people and empathy. So just to give a bit more of an introduction about me, my name is Paula Kennedy, as Andrew said. I work for Pivotal. Uh, in the London office, I work for the Pivotal Cloud Foundry Solutions team. I'm also involved in quite a few meetup groups and events in the L London community, mostly because I enjoy helping people. But it turns out that actually helping people is harder than it looks. Um, I think we've all seen examples of when trying to be helpful can actually cause frustration and, and can be quite annoying sometimes. So why are people helpful? I think it's first of all important to have a look at a definition. When people are trying to be helpful, they're trying to provide assistance, they're trying to do something useful. And I made a basic assumption that everybody likes to be helpful. I've even provided some evidence kind of research that suggests that. So um, when I was thinking about how we help individuals and how we help teams, I started doing, in the pivotal style, a retro of things that we've seen that are helpful and things that are not helpful and things to have a think about. So when I do a retro at Pivotal, I try to start with the bad. And let me start off by talking about not delegating. So as a manager of a team, you might think you're being helpful not delegating because you don't want to overload your team members with work, and you think it's faster to do things yourself, so you're saving your company time and money. But the risk is that as a manager, you burn yourself out because you take on too much. And for your team, they think that you don't trust them. You're not giving them the work, you're not giving them responsibility. So when you think you're helping, you're not really helping your team. Another example is microaggressions. Generally speaking, these are small things that are unintentionally causing discrimination. An example could be, you want to inspire your team to greatness, so you put up posters around your office of the leadership team. But if your leadership team all looks the same, then are you having that negative impact that someone who doesn't look the same as everybody else feels like they're never going to succeed and they're never going to reach the top of your organization? Moving on to things that are kind of things to think about. Hiring somebody who's responsible for diversity and inclusion. You might think this is good because someone can look at the best practices, they can be driving initiatives in your organization, so that could have a very positive impact. But the negative consequence could be that if it's one person's job to focus on DNI, everyone else considers it not their responsibility. So something to have a think about, is that a good thing? Is that not a good thing? Another thing to think about is when we have events or groups for specific kind of underrepresented minorities. So I'm part of the London Ladies Pivotal Group, and I like it because it's a safe space. We can talk about shared experiences. But a potential negative impact could be that we're actually causing exclusion. We're making people feel separate. We're making people feel like it's us versus them, and we're not being inclusive. We're potentially causing division. So on to the good stuff. Things that I think are good, an example is self-care. Now you might think that that's an example of being selfish, but actually it's really important to avoid burnout by taking care of yourself first. So there's a really great talk by Sasha Roman that uh, was at the London DevOps Days, where they talked about essentially this, the example of the oxygen mask. If you can't breathe yourself, you can't help others. So it's important to take care of yourself first before you can then help other people. Another great speaker is Anwan Simmons, who, gave a talk, who gives a talk about lending privilege. For those who haven't seen it, Anwan talks about all of us have privilege in some form or other, and we can use that to help other people. The great example that Anwan gives is from the TV series Star Trek, 
Well, Leonard Nimoy found out that his co-star, Nichelle Williams, was getting paid less than him, and he went to the producers of the series, and he asked that she get a pay rise to be on equal pay. So he used his privilege to raise her up. So that was my quick retro of things that we see in our industry that are trying to help individuals and teams that may or may not be that helpful. My key actions and takeaways from this, the number one thing that we can try to do is to have empathy for other people. If you genuinely want to help, the way to do that is to try and put yourself in someone else's shoes, imagine the problems they're facing, and think what would help you if you were in that situation. Some other suggestions to think about. Are you genuinely helping? Or are you just trying to prove yourself as the smartest person in the room? Try to resist doing everything yourself. Look for ways to help others and seek feedback. If you think you're helping, ask the question regularly. Was that helpful? Was that useful? And then you'll improve. Thank you. Thank you.